that. It's the philosopher with my co-host Jack B. Loy. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> It's me. What's up, everybody? It's a Friday night. And if you saw my story on Instagram, I added the song Friday Night by Montel Jordan. Because it's Friday night. Am I going to be taken down? Um, Hey, everybody, by the IP police. Who believes in IP? Not I. Not you. If you're uh, just coming in, make Not sure to Steven go by Kinsella. the YouTube, YouTube forward slash. Yeah, you want to go to the YouTube and drop us a comment That's so we can weird. see who's all here. That's Let us know if, if you're on you. by and uh, we'll, we'll post the on up here and give you a shout out. But we got a interesting. Oh, uh, hey, topic. Mercenary BD. What up? What up? You know, we're going to talk about critical thinking tonight. Just some terms, basic introductory terms as chosen by my supporters on patreon and subscribe star thank you um so yeah let, let, do, do you want to start there um no actually i want to start with our lou perez event we oh, actually yeah. want to remind okay. everybody that um on september yeah that's just a couple months the uh 9th saturday we actually have an event with lou perez a comedy show and that's gonna be pretty fun oh yeah that's uh i saw him at or we saw him at pork fest and that was really fun I liked his uh, friend slash fellow comedian Brian Brian McWilliams or okay I think, and uh -huh. he was he was funny he was like way too crass and I was like right next to Lynn Ulbricht you know like free Ross Ulbricht you know <laughs> yeah. Lynn's like Ross's mom right and she's like ah Brian ah, get him out I want Lou and it was hilarious. <laughs> And it then, was. She and wasn't then, having it. it which is His good. It's almost really like rough. you needed a really crappy, like, <laughs> like comedian. So that way you look extra, extra hilarious. And like everyone's like, yes. You know, so that was fun. So I'm really excited to see Lou again. I got to meet his wife in person. That was that's cool. True. And his two kids, his little babies. Yeah. <laughs> and, and actually, we haven't, um, since Just that time, quick, we haven't uh, talked about Pork Fest on our own show obviously talk, no talked about it on the lpmc yeah, yeah we uh we were on the mises caucus podcast uh they have a podcast called the decentralized revolution right is that what it's called um yeah i guess yeah decentralized <laughs> revolution podcast that's the way to... is that what it's called? <laughs> i mean it, it's the way okay, to frame don't it. <laughs> quote me on that just go to yeah. the lp mises caucus youtube and you'll see it and then you'll see us there like second or third in their recent streams and that's us with uh, Aaron, Brandy, and Michael. So we got to talk to Michael. We hadn't, Michael apparently hadn't been on the show for quite some time. And we got to check in with him and heard he got a new baby. Yeah. So many babies. So many people having babies right now. I held Angela McArdle's baby at a pork fest as well. That's true. For the first time. He's so cute. Yeah. Little Arthur. Arthur's uh, taking the sword cute. out of the stone one day. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so, you know, that's going to be <laughs> really fun to see Lou. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know what's going to happen at the comedy show, but uh, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. We'll see. And then um, it's called Don't Shoot Lou because there's three different ticketed events. So if you just want to go to the comedy show, you can, of course, obviously. No one's coerced in you. Right. There's technically <laughs> three different or, events for it. <laughs> Yeah, there's, there's, there's a comedy show portion, there's the gun yeah. range portion, and there's a VIP portion. So it's yes. structured where you can choose to go to one, two, or all three up to you. But we break it apart that way just to make it you know more convenient for people to pick if you know budget doesn't allow to do what they care about most kind of thing. But yeah, because some people uh, might just want to watch the comedy show because right. they really like comedy. Some people want to go shooting. Right. They're like, I want, I've always yeah. wanted to shoot. I know one person's like, I want and need to go shoot with Luke. <laughs> that's true. So I was like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Right. So that's what both of comedy, us. But, right. Yeah. For the comedy show, it's just Lou. Lou's a comedian. <laughs> I, as much as I try to make people laugh, I don't do stand up comedy right now. So, uh, <laughs> you will, though. You well, will. I don't know about that. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, that airplane food, huh? Okay, just kidding. Anyway, so <laughs> it's a terrible joke. Um, but yeah, or if you just want to like have conversations with people, then you'll really like the VIP hangout because it's really casual. There's really comfy like lounge chairs that spin around in this room. And by the way, this is all at this gun range that's like a, a gun mall. So like when you walk in, there's like racks of guns on the wall. 
you know, like AKs, ARs, Uzis, 1911s. Anyway, but, um, you know, so check that out. That's just separate. That's part of their whole range thing. But yeah, we got those three different sessions. So it'll be awesome if any of you are in Florida or near Florida or can fly to Florida, you know, check it out. Uh, it's also near um, Tampa Bay and Clearwater Beach which is a beach I highly recommend just check it out. So if you want to make a little vacation out of it, it's really hot here. It's like almost 100 degrees yeah. now. So, I, you know, actually today I, I laid out, I got a tan line. What can I say? But <laughs> it, it's, uh, I'm so excited. It's going to be so, awesome. So yeah, it, come on out. We've had a good time. We, you know, we, we've, uh, we've had a few other events like this. So that was- Yeah, this will be our third. Kind of our, our signature event is doing the gun range thing because we can do it a little bit more uniquely from what other people do. A lot of people do like- hangouts at hotels or like going out camping like pork fest was but to have a range event thing where it's a little bit you know more upscale and, and like comfortable um that's kind of special so that's that's our niche you could say and you know we did that with spike cohen and, and before that liberty doll so those went very well we had a great time lots of people like had lifetime memories because again it's it's more intimate than other events um in terms of just like it's you know smaller group um and you know smaller group hangouts for for everything literally the comedy show and, and the the gun range event and the vip thing are, are uniquely kind of small it's a cool chance like, it's fun if you can you, bring you really your like, friends so. as well like because yeah. it, it'll be yeah. really like intimate like you said and private and you really have the ability to hang out with all three of us so i think it'll be great um i'm just looking forward to see who comes out and uh you know be maybe some friends some familiar faces or there have been a couple of people who've gone to the first two. Um, so we'll see if those people show up again. <laughs> but, oh, okay, it looks like the, that libertarian lady over here, she's in North Florida. She's part of the libertarian part of Duval, Duval County. Oh, nice. And Duval County, Jacksonville, was actually where LPF's holding their next convention. So. Oh, do you know Ron Tracy? I'd imagine. Wow. You must. You must. You must. <laughs> so Ron's really cool. Um, anywho, <laughs> uh, so. yeah. So I'm excited. That hope to see you guys there, and uh, yeah, actually uh, try out some different pieces at the range. It's been a while. So. Yeah, if you bring your own piece, you, they have rentals there as well. So we're gonna be shooting those specifically on they sell ammo. the handgun oh. lanes. So that's mm -hmm. a 15 yard lane. So unfortunately, you know, if you're shooting a rifle that doesn't have handgun ammunition, you know, we won't be on that lane for the event, but you can shoot, you know, carbines or like, you know, if you have an AR and chambered in nine millimeter or whatever, you have, you know, 22 LR ARs, whatever, you know, you can shoot all that good stuff. So you can still shoot rifles and, and carbines as long as, you know, they're just chambered in yeah. pistol ammunition. And we just do that because it's, um, it's like the range that is kind of more exclusive and it's a little bit easier for us to like book that venue as opposed to like the main range that's, you know, kind of hard to do because that's where everybody wants to be. So we're yeah, able it's to more, a lot quieter. We're able to secure it, that. It's, and it's the one that else. they uh, regularly rent out anyway. Right, right. Because they can keep it cleaner and more private. So right, it's separate from like the bigger main halls. So so it's very yeah. It will, from, we won't from, be with right, anyone else, with but anyone else, right. who bought tickets and is part of this mm -hmm. one, you know, that one event for the range session, um, and not the other ones. So yeah, it'll be really cool. Okay, I. You do know Ronald, of course. Well, tell him I said hi. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so that will be great. Uh, let's see how it goes. I wonder if Lou will have new material I haven't heard. I don't know. Yeah, he's supposed to. So <laughs> that's true, too, because um, for the event, this there won't be long. any um, recording. So specifically as part of it, he has um, original and new material and stuff that he doesn't want out because it's going to be a part of a, a different. I learned thing. that's like every so. comedian, like, oh, well, like every professional comedian that I've met. <laughs> that's like a rule that they just have, which makes sense. They just don't want to get out there. So, yeah. All right. Hope to see you guys there and uh, we'll have some fun there in September. Um, all right. So let us get right into it. Uh, we're going to be talking about what is the difference between inductive and deductive reasoning when it comes to determining what is true uh, versus false. So I like this little quick summary here. Um, cause it kind of talks about how it can be misunderstood. It also mentions the scientific method. So, okay. 
Um, this was in 2008, but it still stands. Indu <laughs> induction and deduction are pervasive elements in critical thinking. They're also somewhat misunderstood terms. Arguments based on experience or observation are breath, uh, <laughs> best expressed inductively. You know, I just kind of mix those words there. Uh, while arguments based on laws or rules or principles are be best expressed deductively. Most arguments are mainly inductive. In fact, inductive reasoning usually comes much more naturally to us than deductive reasoning. So just to say that it is more common for most people just base on th base things off of their experience and like direct observations as opposed as opposed to starting from first principles and then like uh, going from there and then like trying to make conclusions from there. So inductive reasoning moves from specific details and observations typically of nature um Thanks. I, I couldn't read that. To the more general underlying principles or process that explains them, e.g. Newton's law of gravity. It is open-ended and exploratory, especially at the beginning. The premises of an inductive argument are believed to support the conclusion, but do not ensure it. Thus, the conclusion of an induction is regarded as a hypothesis. In the inductive method, also called the scientific method, observation of nature is the authority. So the idea that, okay, you rely on observations and sense data here. Uh, at the same time, you would call it as a hypothesis. So you don't immediately just always say like, this is absolute truth, you know? So, all right. In contrast, deductive reasoning typically moves from general truths to specific conclusions. It opens with an expansive explanation, statements known or believed to be true, premises, and continues with predictions for specific observations supporting it. Deductive reasoning is narrow in nature and is concerned with testing or confirming a hypothesis. It is dependent on its premises. For example, a false premise can lead to a false result, and inconclusive premises will also yield an inconclusive conclusion. Deductive reasoning leads to a confirmation or not of our original theories. It guarantees the correctness of a conclusion. Logic is the authority in the deductive method. So if you can strengthen your argument or hypothesis by adding another piece of information, you are using inductive reasoning. If you cannot improve your argument by adding more evidence, you're employing deductive reasoning. So anyway, it's just summarizing just quickly that um, on the one hand, like you, deductive reasoning, I think the point there is it can lead to false conclusions because like, although you can apply logic correctly, um, if your premises are false, you can end up uh, with false conclusions. So it's just more like a way to help you guide and organize your thinking and just try to understand if you may potentially be erring in thinking because human mind is prone to error. <laughs> so, yeah, let's talk about an example of deductive reasoning here, which would be uh, like syllogisms. It's a common thing that's that's brought up. Can you come up with a syllogism? Yeah, that's so reasoning. Um, Jack is a man. All men are are rude. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Therefore, Jack is rude. <laughs> so you know, like you you could have like a false premise that like all men are rude, right? Even though Jack is a man, is true. But like you combine and you're like, oh, well, logically, you know, because he's a man, he would have to be rude. But then you don't realize the error in your collectivist thinking. Well, that's a good uh, example there. Of, um, right. If you can have you can have a, a valid conclusion um, in terms of it's logically flowing from start to finish by saying, you know, all men are rude. Jack is a man. Therefore, Jack is rude. But if your mm -hmm. premise is flawed, then it doesn't matter if that, you know, is has a valid construct. Um, it would be wrong because the, the the underlying premise is wrong. And that's why it's important to, like, think about yeah. the difference between inductive <laughs> and deductive. You know, right. when you start with the truth that you assume truth, or is that really true when you try to draw, you know, the difference from there? Yeah, it. I almost see it. It's like they pair correctly because, like, with deductive reasoning, it's applying logic to premises right to principles that you just assume to be true right and then inductive reasoning is like the process by which you may determine what those principles and premises ought to be right 
it's like through observation of reality through your five senses that's how you would start to be like okay well what is the world like is this a premise um you know what is a man <laughs> right what? like what does that look um, like you know <laughs> uh right or like the hypothesis all men are rude like well first of all like what is rude and it's like are there any examples of men <laughs> <laughs> anyway well that'd be so. a, a counterfactual right when you show mm -hmm. if you show a premise you, or you assume a premise you say oh, oh okay all men are rude but if you have a counterfactual well this guy's not rude well then that would you know dismiss the premise and show that to be a false premise of you know all, all categorically men. right right yeah right we should uh we should talk about some generalizations let's talk about inductive okay. generalizations <laughs> i'd love to okay all right. Well, apparently Jack here is very familiar. This is going deep, deep, deep. Well, I mean, I, you know, <laughs> I did happen to teach the University of Cambridge uh, ACE oh. program for critical thinking skills and global perspectives. So I do I do have some uh, experience, you could say. That's great. Would you like <laughs> would you like to tell us about this since you you taught it? <laughs> no? Okay. Uh, no. Well, so in the <laughs> All right, well, I'm just going to read it and we'll learn together. Um, so inductive generalization. So it is a generalization proceeds. Um, oh, wait, a generalization proceeds from a premise about a sample to a conclusion about the population. The observation obtained from the sample is projected onto the broader population. OK, basically, that is a very technical way of just saying, like, yeah, you just took like a few people and then you chose to apply it to everybody like a few people's actions and apply it to everybody or whatever whatever population i guess so yeah like for example in addition to what i just said about people you could also talk about balls that's a population so you could say there are 20 balls either black or white and in urn to estimate their respective numbers you draw a sample of four balls and find that three are black and one is white an inductive generalization would be that there are 15 black and five white balls in the urn. Right. Cause it's just taking a sample and then like trying to be like, I know the truth, even though like you actually don't because you didn't see everything. And there is no like ought in that case, if you don't actually know the nature of what's in that urn, that it would be exactly the ratio of the sample that you just so happened to pull out randomly. Right. right. It's like so. it's when it, when people make an observation about something and they mm -hmm. see a little bit of a sample and then they go, oh, well, that must apply to everything else. Right. In this yeah. case, it was balls, you know, in a urn, a.k.a. like a vase or vase, depending on where you're from. Um, <laughs> vase. And you're like, oh, OK, well, if there's 20 in there and, you know, there's some four that are, uh, you know, uh, that you're taking out and three are black, one's white. Oh, I wonder if that proportion keeps going, right? So some people try to make those generalizations from a sample, you know, and obviously, you know, in statistics, it gets more advanced with with doing um, significant samples and, and randomization, but that's mm -hmm. that's kind of a way that people will think about that. So let's take a look then at statistical generalization, like uh, a little bit more specifically. Okay, great. So statistical generalization is a type of inductive argument in which a conclusion about a population is inferred using a statistically representative sample. For example, of a sizable random sample of voters surveyed, 66% support measure Z, therefore approximately 66% of voters support measure Z. The measure is highly reliable within a well-defined margin of error provided the sample is large and random. It is readily quantifiable. Compare the preceding argument with the following. Six of the 10 people in my book club are libertarians. Therefore, about 60%. Wait, this is on Wikipedia? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> the Overton window Clearly, there must continues be, to shift. The libertarians <laughs> got control. Or of they've this infiltrated this Wikipedia wiki page. page. Yeah. What is this? The inductive reasoning wiki? <laughs> that's so random. Cool. Um, <laughs> all right. So compare the preceding argument with the following. Six of the 10 people in my book club are libertarians. Therefore, about 60% of people are libertarians. The argument is weak sauce because the sample is non-random and the sample size is very small. Statistical generalizations are also called statistical projections and sample projections. Right. Wait, I didn't know the, the technical terms. Right. So that's there like... you go. That's something to... 
Right. To That's why it's to important to think about, you know, when, when you have a certain representative thing, someone says, oh, statistically, right? People throw that word around a lot, but they're not yeah. actually like talking to the the truth of how accurate that sampling was, how exhaustive it was, you know, what the potential error is. And so, you know, sometimes people do a little bit of math in, in statistics, but it's not, it's not really um, representative. And so there, there's always that issue. And people who try to extrapolate from small anecdotal experience, you know, say like they said with the book club, like, oh, you know, 60% of people must be this. Right. Then, they're going to be in, in, in big trouble. Or it's like, I know five Chinese people and all of them I know are are also rude. I don't know why everyone's rude, <laughs> but it's the, the quickest example. I, I know five Chinese of. people who like to eat noodles, therefore. <laughs> all, all Chinese China. people. See, but that's true. <laughs> well, many, many, many. <laughs> many. But I haven't surveyed them. Have you gone around? Plus, there's so many. Okay. There's billions. <laughs> all right. You know the time it would take to get a statistically whatever sample size, some formula, some weird calculate <laughs> the statistical sample size that we should get. But in any case, in case, the point is what is truth, what is falsehood? And be careful when people are like, well, statistically, blah. Statistically, you know, you'll hear this black people are higher, more likely to commit crime than, you know, white people or whatever. Right. And then it's like, oh, but did you include cops or like, Agents of the state who commit acts of violence, physical violence, uh, people in the military that go to war committing acts of violence for the state, right? They don't talk about that. Well, that, so just to be more <laughs> or they clear, don't include that in those right. Just to be more refined so. about what you're saying, um, that would be specifically, uh, yeah, that would be specifically a framing issue, right? So mm -hmm. um, to get a little bit away from the. the uh, more controversial labeling and get to the root here. The question is, is how is the category labeled, right? So for example, if something is labeled a crime, that means it's breaking the, not only is it you know, breaking the law of whatever the government has down, but it's also means that the intake process focused on those people. Cause obviously lots of people do commit harms and things that would be crimes, but it doesn't mean that they were prosecuted and successfully convicted. So there's that um, framing bias issue. And then there's also right. the issue of, well, what do you care about? Do you care about crime or do you care about violence, right? Because lots of people are criminals because yeah. they got arrested for having, you know, cannabis, you know, victimlessly or- And you're a convicted criminal then. Right. But it was for a nonviolent action. Like you didn't aggress against anyone. You didn't take anyone's property. It was your own property and you chose to do with it what you wanted, you know? Right. Or so. like uh, Maj Ture, he was recently arrested for what? Carrying Yeah, that's a why we didn't get to see him at Porkfest. I was like, oh, I'm excited to see him again. But no, he literally got arrested. And I, I think that's just a, it's a great example, right? OK, so now Maj Ture is a part of the black crimes or you know criminal arrest statistics, right? He's now an arrested black man for carrying a gun. His that, bail was so high. Right. And um, basically, right when you when you look at that, you're like, oh, OK, you can really understand how that system of framing bias works in reality, because, you know, Maj Ture, he was on a, a live stream with, with Tom Woods for School of Life. He wasn't doing anything violent to anybody. He was just carrying normally. And because some officer claimed that they could see a print, you know, through his whatever he was wearing of a gun, they arrested him. Right. So yeah. this, that's a good. By the way, he made bail. I'm just saying, like, the bail was hot. He's out. Yes. So, so yes, but because when saying, you pay for bail, you go through, it, you know, a bail bond agent, you pay 10%. But so it's they're extorting you. They're saying, hey, we're going to, we kidnapped you and we're keeping you locked up unless and until you can pay us this money. So, right. Or get a, a bond agent to do it for you on your behalf. So, right. basically, mm -hmm. um, you know, <laughs> that's, that's a really great example, I think, into thinking about the framing bias issues. Uh, mm -hmm. When you're differentiating between, okay, what do you actually focus on? What does this information represent versus what is the actual concern that you're focused on? Are you fo focused on crime and whatever the government is and does? Or is it, okay, I'm worried about whether someone is like breaking into my home at night or whether someone is you know, trying to murder me kind of thing, right? There's a big difference between that, you know, as, as you know, between what the government says is criminal and, you know, what a libertarian voluntarist thinks of as an actual harm. So, yeah. And then on a different note or additional note there, it's a good reminder to why you would want to check what definitions people are using. Because people may be using 
like your idea of what a crime is may be totally different from what is written in, you know, an MSNBC article, <laughs> you know, they, they think carrying a gun, for example, is a crime, right? But you may not, and I wouldn't, you know, so um, that's definitely something always to check, like whether you're engaged in a debate with anybody or reading something that they've written to check what definitions they're using, um, depending on, you know, what exactly they're asserting, especially if they're making a claim about something, you know, you should understand like what they mean by it. So, right. And essentially, the libertarian scream oh, hey, said, thank you. A little super chat. He said, Question Jack, if I know a lot of oh, ANCOPs, cool. Reed Rothbard just saying, I, like I don't know if that's a question as much as a declarative statement, but unless you have something else you want to ask. Oh, is that like how a lot of <laughs> ANCAPs have read Proud Who? <laughs> yes, I'm an ANCAP who's read Marx as well. I don't know. It seems more <laughs> right. declarative than a question. Right. Uh, Paul's like, is, Was Maj arrested? Yes, Maj Trey was arrested for concealed carrying in Philly. And the, the while he was live streaming a Tom Woods um, school of life, uh, like a class, right? Like he, he was one of the he was doing a, a, a presentation session. for school of life, right? So he was yeah. he was arrested on the on a live stream. So because again, the, the cop was like, Oh, I, I saw but, him, he's printing, right? So printing, printing just means the shape of the gun, you know, for those who don't know, just it's so ridiculous. seems to be on That's how they get you. your shirt or impressed on it. So they just don't want you to carry. They just want you to keep it in a box so that when it's time for you to just <laughs> shoot yourself in the head, that's all they want. They just want you to keep it in a box. They don't really want you to defend yourself. <laughs> ridiculous. That's true. Gun grabbers want that. So yeah. um, we're going to take a look next at Ooh, the these are fun. logical fallacies. Yes. So, I have a I have a poster of this in my room, my office. So what are logical fallacies? Well, Jack, let me read it for you here. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> I like making you laugh. Okay. A logical fallacy is a flaw in reasoning. So logical fallacies, like I said, human mind is prone to error. Logical fallacies are like tricks or illusions of thought, and they're often very sneaky, very sneakily used by politicians and the media to fool people. But don't be fooled. This website has been designed to help you identify and call out dodgy logic wherever it may raise its ugly, incoherent head. I've known about this site for over 10 years. <laughs> I still love it. Like, they're still around. I think it's a not-for-profit, in fact. Um, and they have, like, some things you can buy as well. So like uh, critical thinking cards if you want to practice and, and learn yeah thanks thanks for not um making sure one eye is cut off no you stay like i'm and then part of the illuminati or something <laughs> jeez ah. <laughs> okay no, you, you have to stay still so i can move this to where you are there you go see when you move with it that i can't get you focused <laughs> all right you know how i said You're still like, learning jack okay, is though. rude anyway so i guess yeah. that that was correct um no i'm just kidding <laughs> All right. All right. So, yeah. So basically, don't be fooled. And, uh, you know, these are just tools. Obviously, it, it can't cover all the different possible ways that you can have fallacious thinking. But here are some of the common ones that you may see, especially if you choose to read the comments and a very particular uh, political or opinionated post, you know? <laughs> So let's just take a look at some of those. <laughs> Which one do you want to look at? I like uh, ad so hominem. That That's you, one of the most um, common. Have covered so you, you covered some of the foundations to thinking skills, which is just okay. What is the nature of argument, like deductive, inductive? And so this is like thinking errors, like potential ways that um, someone may be making a wrong causation in their connection. Right. And they so, think it's logical, but it's actually not. Well, they think that they're actually addressing the issue and talking about causal relationships when they're not mm -hmm. so this right here um would you know just go through a couple of them but I, it will uh, also offer some further food for thought but this will give a yeah, sense of kind of what some common... of these are okay so straw man basically is when you misrepresent someone's argument to make it easier to attack so it's like if someone makes an argument and you just you just like can't actually debate it you may change it Maybe you won't even think about changing it and you just do it naturally, but you might exaggerate, misrepresent, or just completely fabricate what they just said in order to then present your own position that may sound more reasonable, like just sounds more reasonable because you rearticulated someone's argument 
as being different from what they're saying. Um, so yeah, that's really common. I've seen that a lot. Uh, and what I like about the site is they have some examples too. Um, of course, we can come up with our own and you've may have seen many, you may have even seen some today. Uh, but okay, this example is after Will said that we should put more money into health and education, Warren responded by saying that he was surprised that Will hates our country so much that he wants to leave it defenseless by cutting military spending. Um, <laughs> this is right. So I've, 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 I've like gotten that <laughs> literal, like, I feel like Will w w commented, I don't know, on my post like every day or something for the past 10 years or something. But like, because <laughs> I've gotten that so much, like when you're just like, hey, you know, I think that children shouldn't be forced to go to school. <laughs> You know, like children shouldn't be forced to learn. Learning should be uh, something that's self-directed. You know, it's like, oh, you must like just hate our country and want everyone to become stupid. Stupid. You know, you want the kids and to become I'm like, stupid. That's not what I'm saying. I'm making an ethical argument here. So hopefully that was another example. So, yeah, that's a common one. Straw men, straw man. What about straw women? so offended the straw man so yeah what about straw ma'am huh where where's the inclusive i'm just kidding all right so this is the fallacy flat fallacy whereas you presume that because a claim has been poorly argued or a fallacy has been made that the claim itself must be wrong so that's just a logical error like that's like you know just because someone may not be able to argue strongly for a position doesn't mean the actual position is wrong you know, like maybe someone doesn't know how to argue that the earth is round. Doesn't necessarily mean, you know what I mean? Like it doesn't mean the earth is flat. <laughs> it just, and vice versa. Or if they use it more so if they use a fallacy in the process, right? Yeah. So the, the fallacy, fallacy specifically is about that you've used a fallacy, but that you've used a fallacy didn't mean that the answer was necessarily wrong. But you have to right. then, of course, buttress that conclusion, of course. Um, but it's possible to, um, you know, basically have the right answer. Um, right. Someone can't be wrong because they're, they made a fallacy. <laughs> well, like, I, like for example, like if I were to it has say to be wrong because it's wrong for a specific reason, right. If you had a, a, an apple and I was like, here, eat this apple. And you like ate it and you're like, Oh, I feel good. And I said, Oh, well that's the magical apple goddess. She's bestowing on you the feelings of goodness, right? <laughs> that might be, wrong in terms of causation but you do feel better but it's not because of the magical apple guys right and it's if because... i was like that's so mystical see right like it didn't actually make me feel good <laughs> i don't know <laughs> it is, yeah you get it right you so it, it, don't it, do you this. can have the right outcome you're like oh, okay it does make you feel better by you know getting nourishment but it's it's really your gastrointestinal tract signaling to you oh the, yeah the body basically the down. debate's not over you just have to tell the person hey that argument you just presented that was that's that's a fallacy. Yeah. But do you have like a, another argument for your conclusion here? All right. Let's look at another example. You don't want to look at. Did we do uh, ad hominem sorry. already? I uh I double clicked. Oh, you're good. Do you want to do ad hom? I think ad homs are. Oh, why is it just? I don't know, man. It's the not, same old. I know this. They got JavaScript some... error. <laughs> okay, I'm error. sorry. You could go back to the original page Maybe. where there's a grid. What if I? That'd be nice. Oh, oh, oh look, oh, ad hominem. Wait. But then when you click right, it's going to change it. Uh, oh, it's not. You made an assertion <laughs> based on induction. You just made an I induction. I did. I gave a live example. Proved wrong <laughs> through experience. Hey, empirical reality. Human mind is prone to error. <laughs> That's why you just go. Oh, whoops. You're right. <laughs> okay, everyone put your arms down <laughs> okay so yeah so ad homs those are common where you're you know you get this a lot from ancoms and <laughs> ad homs are when you attack your opponent's character or personal traits in an attempt to undermine their argument so ad hominem attacks can take the form of overtly attacking somebody or more subtly casting doubt on their character or personal attributes as a way to discredit their argument the result of an ad hom attack can be to undermine someone's case without actually having to engage with it. For example, after Sally presents an eloquent and compelling case for a more equitable 
taxation system. You mean none? You mean abolishing it? I'm sorry. Sam, <laughs> I mean, not sorry. Sam asked the audience whether we should believe anything from a woman who isn't married, was once arrested, and smells a bit weird. So basically, you can see that Sam could not give an argument for why there ought to be higher taxation or whatever he's arguing for, you know? Just not. He just wants to throw shade on Sally over here and say, look, Sally smells weird. Ignore this woman. Like, he's literally just going, she's a witch. Burn her, right? It's the modern uh, form of it. No, not literally. It's just like... (laughs) Figuratively, it's like, yeah, yeah, figuratively. That's good. Cool. So, that's a common one. Look out for those. And you know, one of my favorite ways to respond when someone is fallacious, like they just say something, it's like all it was was a fallacy. I just go, not an argument, period. That's it. And I got that from Stefan Molyneux, and I don't care. I'm just, I like doing that because it's like short and simple. And then sometimes, like, I would say four out of five times, okay, almost all times, the person's like, oh, okay. And then they try to form a better argument and they try to present one. And I'm like, cool, it worked. (laughs) So it's kind of funny. Um, All right, great. Let's watch another, I mean, read another, watch. You're going to watch me, I guess. Uh, Let's read another one, personal incredulity. So this, (laughs) this one is because you found something difficult to understand or are unaware of how it works, you made out like it's probably not true. So complex subjects like biological evolution through natural selection require some amount of understanding before one is able to make an informed judgment about the subject at hand. This fallacy is usually used in place of that understanding. For example, Kirk drew a picture of a fish and a human and with effusive disdain asked Richard if he really thought we were stupid enough There's that word again, stupid, enough to believe that a fish somehow turned into a human through just like random things happening over time. So again, it's not that Kirk is definitely wrong. That would be a fallacy fallacy. Just because he committed a fallacy doesn't mean he's definitely wrong, but it's just more that what he said is not an argument. Like he's just basically shaming Richard indirectly (laughs) Uh, in that regard but more specifically it's a fallacy there well personal incredulity really Mm -hmm. means that you don't believe something because it's like i don't see how that could be possible right it's a projection of your disbelief Mm -hmm. and i think this is often very common in projection for politics you know bring it back to something that we cover a lot um a a lot of times people will 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 talk about politicians and political figures at like high levels like as if they know what's going on for them or in their heads kind of thing like no there's no way that trump would do that you know he's definitely for d chess you know i mean like no you know i mean like they appeal to their personal incredulity like as if these politicians are in any way shape or form like like them kind of thing like their whole incentive structure and lives are so different i mean it's it's pretty clear especially too if you look at you know like epstein and that cabal of people that it's like, yeah, they don't live like you do in any way. These are some very sick people. So, you know what I mean? So some people will, will have personal credibility when it comes to their favorite politicians. Like, no, they couldn't be that. They couldn't do this bad thing. And they're like, I don't believe That's it. a good example. That's a good example of personal credibility. And credibility. <laughs> yeah. I'm and sorry. I was just also smiling reading some of the comments. Someone's yeah. like, Sally smells weird. Ignore her. GIF creation begins. Thanks, Space Ghost Supreme. <laughs> That's so funny, your name. Space Ghost Supreme. That sounds like a really cool t-shirt design, and if you made it, I don't know. Maybe I might rock that. So, Essential Libertarians ask, thanks so much for the super chat. What are your thoughts on Jan Hellfield and his dialogues? Anarchy Rothbard flavor. Oh, is, that, is he like an ice cream and he's Anarchy Rothbard flavor? I'm just kidding. Um, so, I don't know who Jan Hellfield is. Do you? Good. Talk to the expert. Who is Jan Hellfield? So, um, essentially, okay, you meant to change to you. Know, right? <laughs> Who is the I'm like, me? me, me, <laughs> so he's basically this, uh, this guy <laughs> who does a bunch of interviews with people and politicians <laughs> and other stuff like that. And he, um, you know, he basically will use Socratic method with high level people, like, he like talks to all like 
real politicians who are elected in office. Like he's able to get these crazy interviews with these people and he grills them from a voluntary oh, cool. perspective. Like he, he gets oh, now them. I'm going to look him up. Yeah. He, they're really good. They're, wow. they're, they're top. So he's speaking truth to power. And this is a well, guy. Yeah. He's been doing this for a long time. To yeah. Help them get there. I think he may have even been doing it since like the nineties, huh. like oh. actually doing like interviews in the nineties, like Stossel era level. Wow. So, um, you he know. has this really good <laughs> one with, I think it's a senator from Hawaii. I got to look it up because it's Jan an older one. Um, I just forgot the name. It's not Inho, I don't think. Uh, but hmm. he he gets this senator to basically, you know, use a word salad to say that he has the authority to take, uh, you know, people's you know stuff with taxation because you know they they delegate it to me. And he's like, well. But if we don't have the power to do this, how did we delegate it to you? And he like he has to like go through a bunch of mental gymnastics because he's screwed. Like he you know he he sits there and basically sticks his foot in his mouth because he's admitting like, oh, okay, so I as an individual, you as an individual don't have the power to tax. You can't take from people, but I can now magically, you know. So he does stuff like that. It's it's really incredible. In oh, fact, cool. I um, I mean, I would even pull. Up, let me see here. Yeah, can we pull up Maybe. one example? Um. I might actually respond to uh respond to? i don't know a little <laughs> respond <laughs> to? Let's cry. i might be able to also oh, jan Hellfeld. oh without a i so it's f-e-l-d yeah right? jan jan Hellfeld. um h-e-l-f-e-l-d cool uh-huh um so we're just looking he, yeah, up he has some like, examples here he's like um i could show here it I says per profession someone called him a professional congressional debunker right like he goes <laughs> like you can see him he's got bernie sanders oh nancy pelosi nancy let's pelosi, do bernie sanders um harry reed i mean he really bernie sanders went to school with uh oh what's um oh it is oh it is anyway. it actually is sorry i i was right Oop. um he it is anyway so I, I thought oh. it wasn't. But this this is to me like one of the best ones. So let's let's see if we can. Oh yeah. His voice got higher. <laughs> oh, someone said muted, no sound. Oh, yeah, so no one oh. could hear the video. Oh, sorry, guys, for one minute. <laughs> Well, thanks for letting us know. Someone said they're in the mood for pho thai. Um, oh, I see. It may, yeah, it may I'm, been... I'm definitely in the mood for pho thai. Oh, well, well, that's the I'm like always in the mood for pho thai. I think I just had food. my uh, settings here that set to uh, the Thank wrong Thank my outcomes. mother and father for that. Uh, yeah, we're case. just checking the settings. Well, but I won't play it again. I'm, I'm just going to let... We can summarize. You can see it. It Just just go watch it or later. You can also look it up, too. Yeah, no, it's... just tell people. I'm just telling people to look it up. So just okay. look it on up. Jan Helfeld, um, that's a great video. Basically, he gets him to admit that he would find it wrong for individuals to initiate aggression against others and take their property. And then he was asking him, but do you think it's correct if a majority votes someone in and someone in government does it? And that's when he was just like, well, if they have the authority to do so, yes. And it's legal, yes. So it's kind of like just going in circles is what's going on for him in his reasoning and he can't actually have a an argument for why that is ethical so cool well um hopefully you guys can still hear us yeah hopefully uh, it still works. um okay so we just did a couple of fallacies yeah. there's something else to <laughs> sorry that would have been great uh cool yeah let's look at some other uh oh are you done covering uh, logical fallacies yeah Okay. So that was an introduction so people can check out more later. We'll, we'll, we'll tell them where to go. But yeah, it's a good website. So it was um, just your logical fallacy dot is and you can check out this as well. 
Uh, so and what's then, cognitive biases? Uh, so cognitive biases, also made by the same company, this, this website here. Um, so cognitive biases make our judgments irrational. We have evolved to use shortcuts in our thinking, which are often useful, but a cognitive bias means there's a kind of misfiring going on causing us to lose objectivity. This website has been designed to help you identify some of the most common biases stuffing up your thinking potential. So, yeah, let's read some of these here. <laughs> Halo effect was good. Uh, oh, anchoring. That's okay. Uh, yeah, that's a good one. So anchoring is when the first thing you judge influences your judgment of all that follows. So is that kind of like uh, your first impression? Kind of mm -hmm. just is right. it's like a bias that you have that your first impression colors. Yeah everything about that person right so okay cool human minds are associative in nature so the order in which we receive information helps determine the course of our judgments and perceptions for instance the first price offered for a used car sets an anchor price which will influence how reasonable or unreasonable a counter offer might seem even if we feel like an initial price is far too high it can make a slightly less than reasonable offer seem entirely reasonable in contrast to the anchor price which is actually, this is a, <laughs> this relates to like a tactic in negotiations <laughs> for, for things. Cause like, if you, if you give an offer that may be like way out of the, like out of bounds for that other person, well, it may seem like something that, you know, prior to that, you mentioning that even higher price or amount or whatever it is, like it may actually seem now less, uh, you know, unreasonable. So. It's just interesting how you can, <laughs> how, how that's used, that that common bias. So, I, oh, sorry, can I read that in there? The, the oh, bottom and the back sorry. one. Okay, so be especially mindful of this bias during financial, oh, I just said that, during <laughs> financial negotiations, such as houses, cars, and salaries. The initial price offered has proven to have a significant effect. So, yeah, just notice if someone's doing that to you or... Use that to your advantage. All right. The sunk cost of a house. You rationally cling to things that have already cost you something. Well, this is really common, right? Like you, you know, spend money or time or something <laughs> or you feel strong about something and it's just hard to let it go even when you discover that it's, you know, not the right thing for you or this person's irrational or whatever. So when you, so it reads, when we've invested our time, money, or emotion in something, it hurts us to let it go. This aversion to pain can distort our better judgment and cause us to make unwise investments. A sunk cost means that we can't recover it, so it's rational to disregard the cost when evaluating. For instance, if you spent money on a meal but you only feel like eating half of it, it's irrational to continue to stuff your face just because you've already paid for it, especially considering the fact that you're wasting actual time doing so, and also maybe like overeating, expanding your stomach, causing yourself to feel sick. And maybe, you know, costing more money in the long term with health effects if you do that enough, like overeating. So to regain objectivity, ask yourself, have I not eaten enough? I'm just kidding. It says, had I not already invested something, would I still do so now? What would I counsel a friend to do if they're in the same situation? <clears throat> That's a good one. That's good. <laughs> Yeah, so the, these are just great ways to be like, oh, why am I doing this? This is causing me pain. Oh, could it be because I have a sunk cost bias here? And then if you can acknowledge that, it kind of that knowledge, then it's it's a actually all these cognitive biases is more about uh, and also logical fallacies. But I would say more so the cognitive biases are more related to having knowledge about yourself and how you think, uh, because where depending on like what cognitive bias it is and what's going on, it may be rooted in something in your history, right? It did, or something related to your own experiences that you may not have processed. So fascinating. All right, let's see what else <laughs> we we want to go. Jack wants to share here. Okay, the availability heuristic. Oh, uh, your judgments are influenced by what springs most easily to mind. So how recent, emotionally powerful, or unusual your memories are can make them seem more relevant. This, in turn, can cause you to apply them too readily. 
For instance, when we see news reports about homicides, child abductions, and other terrible crimes, it can make us believe that these events are much more common and threatening to us than is actually the case. I mean, it went through that with all the COVID lockdowns, shutdowns from 2020 to, you know, for some people into 2023. <laughs> um, but well, I'm, I would say the gun, the stuff media cycles, with like, like it's very intentional gun control. Whenever uh, yeah. people see lots of news stories and they mm -hmm. see like, oh, there's a mass shooter or something like that. People right. start to be like, oh, that's normal. They're happening. Everywhere. Yeah, they it's make like, conclusions, no, right? They start to make conclusions like, oh, my gosh, we needed the government to come in. It's a crisis here. We have a gun crisis in America because they turn on the TV and because it's whatever, you know, may the bloody month of may they need to like show <laughs> a bunch of horrible you know shootings or whatever like <laughs> and then people watch it and then if they don't have long-term thinking and you know a contemplation that they might have a bias like this they may immediately act and react to to seeing all of those you know horrible uh videos and images of people suffering and dying and being murdered so well, and right. That's yeah. That's, and that's what the news does is that <laughs> yeah. normally you think of news as being something unusual, right? If something's newsworthy, right. it's like, oh, okay, it's something that's unusual, right? You don't, the news isn't, hey, this is the most common thing that people are doing. Oh, look, this person's just pooping, this person's eating, <laughs> right? So, you know, just people have a, a reverse yeah. psychology with it, though, where the news propagandizes with it and uses that rarity to make it seem like it's happening all the time and that's often used for political control and, and you know and trying to yeah. manipulate people into making them believe something's more common than it really is um especially on a, the scope of being as big as america is 330 you know nearing 40 million people um, right. they try Almost. to make it seem like as if oh my gosh every time you go out you're gonna get shot by somebody who <laughs> you know whatever so yeah yeah it's almost like the the news is trying to you know, the corporate media at least is trying to say like, hey, this is the what you should be believing right now. This is what you should care about right now. This is uh, the problems that you should be focused on, the people you should be focused on the most right now. And it seems like they can, there's like people who are just in that state of reaction from day to day. They're just reacting and they're trying to get their needs met. They don't know how to get their needs met. And they're really not thinking long term or even analyzing the past to understand themselves so they're just fed whatever you know content is there uh, in the media for them to consume and then they get all wrapped up in it and then they're no longer doing anything like advancing their life advancing their skills uh, growing their relationships connecting and getting closer to uh, their existing relationships so yeah one more. That's what we're trying to get people to get out of. And this is one of the ways, you know, is just like analyzing what are those common errors in thinking that can happen? Or, you know, what are possible errors? And then in general, just adopting a mindset of recognizing that, hey, it's okay if I'm wrong. It's possible that I'm wrong. Human mind is prone to error. It's normal. It's common. And the question is, how do you figure out and take it, you know, take a step back and determine what the truth is. Uh, but you don't get there unless you are open to being wrong and, and open to actually exploring what, what it is. So, all right, let's cover another bias here. So this is in-group bias. You unfairly favor those who belong to your group. Uh, yeah, that's pretty common, especially if you went through like the public school system. <laughs> it's like a really common one you see. Gang, gang. Right. Yeah. Like whatever your group says, then you all suddenly start dressing the same or arguing for the same things. And maybe you don't want to be outcasted. So you're going to just pick up their same ideologies of most people. So, all right. We presume that we're fair and impartial. Who's we? No, okay. but the truth is that we automatically favor those who are most like us or belong to our groups. This blind tribalism has evolved to strengthen social cohesion. However, in a modern and multicultural world, it can have the opposite effect. Try to imagine yourself in the position of those in-out groups while also attempting to be dispassionate when judging those who belong to your in-groups. Okay, cool. Yeah, that makes sense. So it's just like trying to, uh, right, imagine that whoever you're talking to is somebody else if you want to just see whether you're unfairly favoring them 
Right. Just that you, you know, you might be like, oh, they you know, they wouldn't do that. Like that's that's my particular, you know, friend or click, whatever, like that. And, you know, for others, you're more basically discriminating or more, you know, just be like, oh yeah, they're not with us, so that they must be wrong automatically, kind of thing. Right. So so that's just kind of a nice little uh, sampling there of yeah, some it's a of fun the, web two uh, fun websites to go through and just kind of look through and think about your own life. The own, your own times you may have committed logical fallacies or, you know, had a cognitive bias going on or people you knew, <laughs> especially in matters of, of conflict. And, um, and with that, um, <laughs> yeah. you know, the websites we just checked out, your bias is, dot is, is a great one. And I think before it was uh, your logical fallacy is those are great uh, starts oh, yeah. um, for checking this up. But we also uh, recommend highly. I have both of those you, posters, by you the do way. have both of those posters <laughs> in your room. Yeah, I've had them for like eight years now. Still up. Still go over to look. Hmm. Yeah, they're really big. They're like like half my body size yeah they're like three feet yeah they're huge right more than half my body size three yeah. fists all right so so i was just gonna say wanna, really quick yeah yeah um the tuttle twins uh actually has their own books on these topics they have the tuttle twins guide to logical fallacies they yeah, also um have the tuttle twins guide to boy your bias so these are great books to have um especially you know if you want yourself to kind of get a sense of of these principles and these ideas and they're also really good for young people too they're they're teen oriented but i think teen to adult can read them um but they're you know when you get these books you're at least supporting liberty what kind of reading company, level so. would you say like uh, we fifth, have them fifth grade sixth grade or oh uh, i don't like to think about it in grades no. but i think that it's <laughs> it's something that yeah. um you know anyone who you know is a decent reader 12 plus could read no problem um and I think I think they're uh, you know just excellent books overall to um, to have. They're great you know for both even for adults. Again, it's it's a good book to have if you want to like freshen up on logical fallacies. And we have links to that in the description below. Um, obviously, supporting people who love liberty is much better than supporting the uh, the neoliberal uh, or maybe just regular liberals over at your fallacy is, which they have some good stuff there. But you can tell from how they frame stuff. They're like very you know clearly very status leaning even though they have some good stuff so um definitely they check out some title stuff. twins because they have they have uh, great resources here and uh you know something else that is going to be coming up real quick yes freeze oh funny memes. phony memes phony memes yeah, that's actually like, funny like because you say fa yeah and then me funny funny so it's actually just funny oh still. okay or if you have like a really strong Vietnamese accent, then it'd be like funny. But I I don't. <laughs> that you don't. All right. But before we get to the funny memes, we have Ooh, some people. Yes. Think. We drink this coffee every day. And like I never grounded gr grounded my wow. own beans before. And now that I have, I'm like, I'm not going back to like pre-ground. So I really like <laughs> custom Joe roasting because like when you order, that's when they roast it. And we met him and his wife. He's really awesome. Um, and uh, looks like this code is still good, even though it's 2023, folks. That's right. It may or may not work, but either okay, way, well, just get the if coffee. It doesn't, let get me know. And if, <laughs> yeah, and you, if you really need that 10%, like send me an email at thephilosopher <laughs> at gmail.com. That's you know, how to spell the philosopher. Okay. So yeah, cjroasting.com. It's organic coffee. Uh, and I tried, we got their uh, Asian good. pack. So yeah. we haven't tried all the different flavors yet, um, but we've gone through our first two pack of beans uh, that I grounded myself. And on our previous live stream, not like the most previous, maybe like two or three ago, we actually uh, ground them live. Yeah. Like I held up the grinder and I grounded <laughs> all the beans. And then I made some coffee. It was really good. It was good. Actually, Added I some, like it. We've been drinking it every day. Organic mm -hmm. milk creamer. Oh, it's it's nice when we milk. have people that are uh, nice enough to, to sponsor the show and our and stuff believe who in make what good we do. stuff. Right? Yeah. Because I don't want crappy products. So at least this is like we personally have tested the coffee and we're like, oh, okay, it's good. Yeah. So I can stand behind it. I have drank this now for many weeks. 
<laughs> yeah. So thank you, Custom Joe Roasting, for being one of my producers on uh, Patreon. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your monthly support. And uh, yeah, check out that coffee. Keeps us going every day. <laughs> Gives us that, mwah, you know, that that little burst of energy that just like, ah, I can be productive. All right. Beto Destrafa, you're awesome. Thank you for being here all this time. Really appreciate you being a fiducer on this show. This is this show over here helping to make all the funny memes and music possible. Uh, Crawford K. McDonald, thank you so much as well for your support. So many years we go back now, and uh, congrats on your new baby. That's awesome. Yeah, new so babies, many babies, so many babies. All the like the millennials who didn't have kids in their twenties, they're now having kids because they're all thirty now in having, their thirties. Yeah, it's time for baby. <laughs> so I'm just like, see it all like turn here, right? Oh my gosh, this friend who's now like thirty something. Whoa, they got kids now. Everyone's having kids, and soon it won't just be Jack and I here. Maybe you'll hear a where in the background, and hopefully our child doesn't sound like what I just said. Where that'd be weird. <laughs> like that'd be a weird one. But yeah, let's. Oh, so Jack want me. Jack wants me to read this behind bars moto tour. I screenshot the book. Oh, just because I posted it doesn't mean person. I want you to read it. But, oh. but in this case, you can read it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but you put it up. I'm so like, I just I put it up for it. fun because if I like something, maybe I'll put it up. Well, Not then always, I like but, to read. But I like this one. All right. Well, so he screenshots the books and sent them to your parents. Side note, friends are loving the Texas of Cup. Yeah. Oh, Texas cool. Of That's Cup. awesome. Hell yeah. Sweet. Thank you. Hell yeah. I've never been motorcycling. Ever since I tried a dirt bike once. And you I dirt went biked? A, no, dirt biked. Oh. Sorry. English is my third language. Yeah. Uh, sometimes I, I mess up on some words. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> uh, okay. Cool. Let's go. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes, please. Is that the first meme? Yes, please. You but, saw the. No, you've been just, seeing the memes. That's just the first. Uh, I've been giving you phony memes. All right. I mean, funny. Okay. When you're built for feed, not speed. <laughs> that is a fat little horse. It's so small. Yeah. Oh, gosh. This is terrible. Oh. No one. Instagram models. Why is the dog? <laughs> that dog is like, got cake. <laughs> this is how people become furries. We got to appeal it's content like this. to the two furries who are here. If you're a furry, let us know in the comments. What about, what was that thing about like, see no evil <laughs> here? No, okay. And there was in my notifications, you have violated community standards for me. And that was posted four years ago. And there was in my notifications, you violated community standards for me that was posted four years ago. <laughs> That's good. All I right, can't Jack. do it the deep. I can't do it deep. Oh, Peter. Peter. Hey, Lois. Hey, yeah, Lois. <laughs> and there it was in my <laughs> notifications, you have violated community standards. <laughs> <laughs> We're just trying to do the voice for a meme that was posted four years ago. <laughs> okay, where's Seth MacFarlane when you need him to do Peter Griffin? Smush. All right. <laughs> I like accents. Okay, you were homeschooled? That's unfortunate. Homeschoolers don't know how to talk to strangers. And yet here we are. I think it's interesting that like his talk bubble is not to his <laughs> mouth, but to his head. <laughs> He's thinking. Dang it. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> Who made this? Oh, homeschool. at homeschooling <laughs> with homeschooling. <Okay. laughs> well, you left the toilet seat up. Oh, that's so funny, right? Your women's like, hey, Wayman. you left the toilet seat up. Stop. Meanwhile, she's just <laughs> dumping all her makeup all over you. You sink. Well, I would say I don't do this, you know, and I do say that to Jack. I'm like, you left the toilet seat up, <laughs> but I'm very organized. Wouldn't you say, Jack? You're organized. Yeah. You're organized on a lot of things. And then, and then I'm organized in the rest, basically. <laughs> I'm like, when is he going to write his own? Oh, bitch. Okay. <laughs> when you forget to bring a towel to the shower with you and you're a hippo. 
<laughs> You're is a that hippo. a hippo? That's a hippo. Is that a baby hippo? Yeah, oh my gosh. Hippo. Babies, <laughs> so cute. All right. When the deep state leaked your B day, B day <laughs> to the waitresses and they start clapping and walking towards you. <laughs> you're at you're at like you know i don't know the pho restaurant and they're like hi happy okay anyway right. great I and you're alex that, jones but... in his <laughs> lawsuit okay they cheated the last election better vote them out this time i always think that's funny how people are like hey yeah there was a lot of fraud last time like and like, but we got to vote harder. I'm like, okay, I, I don't think that's how that works. I'm like, I'm pretty sure you don't take care of cheaters by playing by the rules that they literally break. I think you just take the cheaters out, right? You know what I mean? Like, you don't even allow them to keep playing. You're like, hey, they cheated. Right, but they there's no way to get them out because they cheated, so they're in, so they're good. You have to prove they cheated. Yeah, well. Tough. All right, Grandma, all people think about is sex these days. Also, Grandma has 20 kids. <laughs> oh. So true. <laughs> Basically. Jeez. Here to make all the babies. <laughs> That's funny. My hands look like this, so hers can look like that. Card declined. <laughs> Honestly, I, I feel that. That's so funny. I need to buy some. It's That's been a hilarious. While. But so is that just a poor guy who can't like get both? I mean, he got, I guess it must be where he's bought a lot and now it's declined. He bought too much. I really, I'd want a Ruger 1022 <laughs> with, that, with that, you know, unscrewable front. No, I don't. Oh, I want that. It's, you want to show? You want to pull it up? Oh, uh, no. Okay, nah. All, all right. I'm just gonna get the jealous. first ad for the Elon Musk versus Mark Zuckerberg fight just dropped. Okay, so which one's the reptilian? <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> so Elon's Iron Man. Obviously. Hilarious. <laughs> well, he is kind of like Iron Man. I know, He's like a sleep. Well, because he gets around. One. He yeah. literally slept with someone's wife. He's like, hey, I don't have a house. I'm asleep on your couch. And then he sleeps with the man's wife while he's at work. I have. Yes. That's not the Hulk? Hulk? No. Oh, because the Hulk also did that. Hulk Hogan definitely did. Well, I mean, but he... No, I'm talking about Elon Musk. About that. Elon Musk slept Whereas with apparently wife? Mark, apparently, know. you know, had the same girlfriend, Chinese girlfriend, really? <laughs> since uh, Harvard days before oh, Facebook. Right. right. Anyway. True. Funny. All right. Anywho, it's just coincidences. Okay, friends, let's get a table outside. <laughs> me oh this is funny i feel attacked <laughs> because regularly we'll go somewhere and i'm like it's such a nice day out it's like 95 degrees it's really hot it's sunny i want to sit in the sun and then jack's like oh god oh no i'm okay i'm fine with you? the sun it's other people it's other oh people. you oh yeah you i'm great in the sun wait i've been here for eight and hot but i look at you and you're roasting but i guess you enjoy it no i enjoy it. it i'm good it's That's other good. people i'm glad have, you're a sun problem. bug that's great. Just got to get rid of your farmer's tan. Yeah. I try to tell him, like, would you take off your shirt? And he's like, no, I'm good. I'm like, it's okay. Me, me at my own funeral sharing one more meme before I go to hell. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's real. That's funny. Um. <laughs> all right. Any Christians, Catholics out there, please bring that meme to the next, yeah. uh, your, your next church service. See how many laughs you get. All right. <laughs> Without my loving wife, I would have no clue of all the things I do wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't that the truth, huh? He's like looking off in the distance. You know it's true. That's so funny. Well, and vice versa, right? Without my loving husband, I could just make the girl version of this, <laughs> but then... Because I said without my loving husband, I wouldn't be aware of all the things I do wrong. All the women, not all the women, but a lot of like <laughs> crazy women come out and be like, oh my gosh. Okay, whatever anyway. But it's funny when you make fun of men. Men are like, that's it's allowable. Easy. You know right, what I mean? Like course. in America, it's allowable to say men are dumb. Husbands are dumb. If mm -hmm. you say like moms are dumb, wives yeah. are dumb. Attack. They'll get mad. <laughs> they get big mad. Yeah, my fellow women, 
You know, it's oh, all part of like keeping the patriarchy down. You know, it's you allow cross dressing women to get, I mean, men to get into power, and you just you think the patriarchy is ending when it's it's only still begun. there. The patriarchy when it's only begun, <laughs> it's just beginning. <laughs> when the balls are in your face, but they're glittery, the rule and they have mascara has just begun it's still the patriarchy the patriarchy is here but with glitter okay with when you glitter. start to excel people start to spreadsheet bro you have a powerpoint <laughs> interesting outlook wow that's funny does that go on <laughs> microsoft memes huh? oh uh huh. can i add another one yeah uh, yeah yeah what you got cool project <laughs> What oh, cool project? That's terrible. All right, what's yours? Do you have one um, right now? Right now? Right I, now. Okay, okay, okay. Word. Oh, that's so good. Why did I think <laughs> you could have just done one thing. I could have just done a word. Word. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's could, why Jack's. You could have also been like, oh, this visual so basic. And have the talent. All right. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay um that's punny punny uh -huh. funny memes oh is that it legacy. no that's it no um but i was just thinking about what else like what other microsoft suite things are left now because there's um what's out like what isn't there another there used to be something else besides it in the suite there's like a little like access access that's what it was access. sharepoint yeah project <laughs> okay Vizio. All right. She was my cantaloupe dog baby. Your IQ is now 95. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. She was my melancholy baby is right. Baby. She was my melancholy baby. Melancholy baby. I don't know, but I thought it was funny. So, is that a personal thing? You know someone who's melancholy? I don't. I think it's a song. I don't know. I just thought it was hilarious. <laughs> Never look like an alcoholic again. Um. <laughs> now you just look insane because that's a fake child. And you're constantly sucking your baby. That's kind of weird. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What are these like? dance moves with fingers <laughs> i think this is from avatar these are the finger moves <laughs> oh these are the finger moves for avatar yeah <laughs> that's funny and they create this <laughs> <laughs> oh they're the ones that brought it upon naruto yes oh <laughs> this is the, the formula oh for... my gosh so avatar and naruto are actually connected <laughs> Are there any like people who love I Avatar and Naruto? Some people love <laughs> Avatar The Last Air, but John and Brandy. Okay. You'll have to watch that later. See what we want. <laughs> Your mom showing you all the places you miss when she told you to clean the house. Here! <laughs> and here! <laughs> and here, too! Oh, yeah. no. You know that That's feeling. That's funny. Uh, except for my mom was unique. She didn't tell me to clean the house because yeah. she was so OCD that she had to clean the house herself. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> So, in fact, I would try to help her, and then she's like, no, let me do it. Don't talk loud. You don't know how to clean. Let me. Yeah. No, I appreciate it. You clean well now. You, you you grew up well. I love my mom. All right. 51 Business Insiders. Okay. Oh, Declaration of Memes. We met him. Liberty Campy over there in mm. Pork Fest in the woods of uh, New Hamps. We did. Near the Canadians. Their uh, identity is safe with in us. In New Yorkers. 51% of Americans pay no federal income taxes. Whoa, what happened there? Yeah, that's Bon Jovi. Hey. Hey. That's cool. Who's that? Richard Nixon in the on the drums? Anyway, <laughs> it looked like it. Um, them. You need to try this eco-friendly bug steak. Me. <laughs> Isn't that Michelle from the sh the, the house? Family Full house, house. Full family, house. family house. It was from that family house <laughs> show, right? Fam Sometimes I just like forget the name family of matters, something, so I'll come house. up with like a similar name, and like Jack has, yeah. you know, he's been been here. Yeah, I used to watch Full Matters. <laughs> Full or, house. I mean, House Matters. 
<laughs> full, yeah. full family house matters i used yeah. to watch full family <laughs> yeah all right that's funny full yeah guy. i don't want your eco-friendly bug steak get out of here i want some real steak i mean real steak okay so you see that's where the trouble began koreans on the rooftop rooftop ready that smell that damn smell I mean, that is a great smile. I, this is so funny. I haven't seen this up. template before. That's hilarious. <laughs> that is a great smile. He's so yeah. happy. He's in the sun. He's like, I'm in Cali. I'm defending my store. It's so awesome. My family didn't move here just to have people take our property. That's <laughs> right. We will defend. Because, you know, America is a culture to those who escape tyranny. And we're here to make American culture what it should be about individual liberty. All right. So Vin Diesel says when your estimated time of arrival on Google Maps changes from 1127 to 1126. Um, oh, my gosh. So oh fast my. and furious. Can we show that Vin Diesel meme where he's like, anyway. That's from last time. All right. Who built the roads before 1913? Who built the roads? <laughs> that's funny basically people okay finally got the food pyramid figured out it's just meat yeah <laughs> just a bunch of steak <laughs> you know i will say i'm not a carnivore i mean there's all what i love about the market is you can be there's any kind of diet you want you know if especially with the nature of how many people have different allergies and different sets of allergies you know you could be just allergic to eggs, just allergic to milk. You could be, you know, allergic to nuts, but everything else is fine. You may also just not like the taste of blood and not like the idea of eating animals and just want to avoid that and just eat plants, you know, but like that's the beauty of the market and, and respecting each other's rights as human beings is like we can actually trade and come together and help give each other and build build a world where we have so many options to choose from and like within a year you could have like try five different diets and just only go to your local store and, and get the things you need i mean it's quite incredible but for me yes i am just like i would say i'm like 50 percent meat and like 50 percent salad and 50 percent carbs rice. I try to not do too many carbs now and just focus on like fruits, vegetables. And then like meat is the most filling thing for me. Like, you know, I could have, you know, this much sausage or meat or something. And it's so filling as opposed to if you ate a salad, I could eat like two big bowls of salad and still be hungry, for example. So I just like vegetables because I like the taste. I grew up eating a lot of different vegetables and fruits in addition to a lot of different meats and seafood. So I just like it. But anyway, carnivores. All right. <laughs> Eventually, they mentioned the childhood trauma that made them like that. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I just don't get Why is it like a, a short dog with two tiny of legs? I don't know, but I like it. <laughs> his feet are too small like uh, he's got really isn't tiny. that like not right like how can he walk is he just bred to be weak yeah he's bred to just trot around oh that's sad all right how a truck driver stares at you while you try to back up and park your little car <laughs> <laughs> so that's good funny that's true oh my gosh when i was young i thought this was the epitome of wealth and sophistication. Vignette. <laughs> Honestly. Oh, I would eat Vienna sausages and just think they were like the most I amazing think thing. That as a kid. You had you like when Vienna sausages? Those, no, I'm just oh, oh. no I, the Briars <laughs> ice cream thing here. When I saw those ads oh, as a kid, Briars. I was like, whoa. Oh, I like, missed that. This is amazing. I thought that was sausage. It's not sausage. <laughs> oh, whoops. No. That is literally I'm ice cream. Changing it ears because my left ear. Okay, I it, I mean I, I it just I always I did I saw that as a kid I was like oh okay this is like what rich people eat dude Briars is delicious like if you're able to have milk it's creamy deliciousness it's so good oh good all that milk fat man mm. all right Bruce Campbell groovy Bruce send me a script. <laughs> 
<laughs> Petition to replace Amber Heard and Aquaman 2 with Bruce Campbell reaches $3 million. <laughs> I accept the terms. Um, yes. Bruce Campbell for all of Aquaman. He should also be Aquaman and Amber Heard. <laughs> That's weird. Yes. That's weird. Oh, yeah. It looks like George Clooney. He does, but even yeah. handsomer. Oh. When Pinocchio has been listing off conspiracy theories and his nose hasn't moved at all. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> like, would you bring him to trial if he was like a real thing? Yeah, I'd bring him to a lot of things. He would be like famous. <laughs> Imagine like, I can, I could never tell a lie. And like my nose grows when he lies. Right. Like, I'd ask him like, so okay, much. tell me what the, uh, or, yeah, like, are, is this going to be the winning lottery number? And you just keep saying it. <laughs> okay, what the heck is this? <laughs> Choose your own adventure. <laughs> Taking mushrooms and going to Walmart. That sounds <laughs> like the adventure. <laughs> <laughs> so Imperial Guard. Hey, what's up? He never liked their ice cream much. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Really? Yeah, that was so good. <laughs> Maybe I'm just vanilla like that. But uh, New York now. Times best. Why is his eyes like far apart? <laughs> That's the point. <laughs> Gosh. Gorsh. It's yeah. just like, it's like otherwise such good art. It's like whoever drew that man. It's right. like maybe the colorist was great. But, okay. Bikers on their way to swerve through lanes at 180 miles per hour and blame cars for not paying more attention. <laughs> Are these just um, drivers shots. in Miami? <laughs> you should replace bikers with drivers in Miami. Yeah, right. And they're sharks. It could still work. People do that. But you, you give them like a Hawaiian shirt instead that's open, unbuttoned. It was always hot and moist down there in Miami. Okay. People in 2002 when unlimited minutes kicked in after 9 p.m. Oh, yeah. That's right. Remember unlimited Gosh, minutes? Gosh, that's nostalgic. Look yeah. at those phones. He's got multiple. He He's three. got three phones. He's like, <laughs> and he has like those headphones. He those foam headphones. Yeah. <laughs> oh, those Stuff. basketball jerseys. Accidents in real life. Accidents in anime. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Things okay. that never happen. <laughs> 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 All you. All right. When you're two blocks from your house and you begin to lose the battle, um, <laughs> this this is so much. Yikes! I don't think I needed to see that. Yikes! Yikes! You ever been close to losing the battle though? This is what they want. This is literally. <laughs> the deep state agenda releasing memes about booty holes okay <laughs> all right i'm just kidding all right what's, <laughs> is that the last meme you're gonna end on that's that? it that's the last meme gosh so you're about to lose the battle jack i'm not i'm great I, i'm all good i'm all set <laughs> well that was fun i really like talking about uh <sighs> the different logical fallacies that can be had and yeah. cognitive biases and what the difference is between inductive and deductive reasoning is yeah i think it's it really fun yeah uh, definitely good stuff to check out so anybody who's a lot of good stuff, laughs yeah a lot no, of good notes through those things and um you know sharpen your mind with it right check out that the fallacy and cognitive bias page check out those books by tell twins are cool and links are down below too for those yeah um, and uh hope to see you at our event in mm -hmm. september with lou perez and uh, that's on Eventbrite, so check that out. I think we put it in the description, a link yeah. to Eventbrite. And also there's but, something yeah, uh, coming up cool. We're about to shoot the Break the Great Reset music video. Oh, yes, that will be fun. Uh, so we have the same producer coming in from the New York. The same producers that... right here, and the same videographer <laughs> from New York is coming down. Yeah, the one that shot uh, <laughs> the anti-state music video for us. <laughs> Yeah, so we're, we're going to be shooting that uh, coming up real soon. Um, it's going to be awesome. We got in the costume yeah, stuff. Yeah, I've been doing like 50 burpees every day just to prepare. I'm like, I need to be strong because <laughs> I don't want to go along with the Great Reset. And I'm going to do my very best to resist. So, you know, so we're going to be doing that. And uh, we have a recurring actor in my m music videos coming back and this time he's gonna play a young klaus schwab so that's gonna young be funny schwab. yeah that'll be fun and he's gonna be eating bugs 
and we got real bugs. Well, we They're don't like, want to give away all the secrets oh, here. Oh, okay. All right. As much as you want to. We want to keep some things All right. Surprise. Well, then that was just a little teaser that. Yeah. Be on the that. lookout. Just take that Within the mind. next two or three months, you'll be seeing a music video for Break the Great Reason. It was crazy too, because like we, I was working on the costuming thing up to the last minute. We we had it with our tailor, who we normally work with, and he's done a bunch of other stuff with our music video stuff, and other cosplay stuff. And he, you know, kept getting back to me over like six weeks, and then finally, we like <laughs> we came and we're like, hey, we really need this. He's like, oh, okay. And then he he says he's gonna call us, and then he doesn't call us. And the next day, he calls us finally. And then when we get it from him, he's like, oh, okay. He's like, by the way, I'm about to go to like you know Greece tomorrow. We're like, thanks. That's 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 good to know. You know what I mean? So he was going to be gone for months. So we had, if we didn't put that pressure on him, we wouldn't have had the costume done in time. But we we got every last prop in needed up to you know up to the wire at the last second. So we're we're good. We got everything um, we need. But it's it's going to be a fun time. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited. So it's going to be a fun little gang out there, and uh, we're going to be playing Break the Great Reset in a crowd of people. <laughs> like over and over for seven, eight hours just around. Yeah. And so we're just going to be blast and break the great reset and talk about central bank digital currencies and Klaus Schwab and breaking the great reset. So it'll be fun <laughs> yeah. to just see. And we'll be giving uh, updates so. to like um the, those who supported on the campaign. Obviously we get the, the behind the scenes little teaser yeah, video we'll thing. Be building and then we'll also fun. post maybe one public picture something like that maybe some behind the scenes stuff i think too you're gonna post to your patreon subscribe star people so yeah but we'll save like most of the video behind the, the video scenes part, for the backers right the video so. part is, is specifically a part from the campaign so the the secret behind the scenes video thing will be sent but maybe a couple pictures otherwise and real quick too do want to thank the essential libertarians for yes support. thank you so much thanks oh, i love your rainbow and thank you so cool. um Michael Adams for your super chat. I'm not sure what the thing is. Maybe it's a sticker. But oh, a sticker. Yeah. I could probably look at it. But... Probably could. Oh, cool. But... Thank you so much. Yeah. So we'll we'll update you soon. But yeah, that, that's what's happening next. And then after that, um, I mean, it's it's kind of secret, but I don't I, I don't mind telling you people here, you people watching. Huh? But we'll be popping into Yao real quick. So oh, we're going to be going to young. We're not doing anything official with them or anything like that. We're not speaking or anything. We're, we're going to pop by to say hi and hang out for a little bit with everybody. And um, so if you're going to Yale in Orlando, um, what date is that? I don't remember. August 13th, uh, if 14th? you're going to Yale's annual conference that they have. Oh, August 12th. Um, this will be their annual conference. So, yeah, it's just August 12th. Um, yeah. It's called Yale Rev. Yeah. Uh, or you just look up Yao annual conference. You can get tickets if you actually want to go see what speakers they have. Like Scott Horton's going to be there, Spike Cohen, some other people. So you know, if Spike you actually want to be there, I thought so. Oh, I didn't know. Um, okay, maybe I could be wrong, but I, could I, be. I thought I read I that. It well, could verify. Be. Just check out the website, verify. But point is, we're not going. We're just going Saturday night just to see some of our friends. Wait, there. that's a contradiction. You said we're not going. We're not going to the different events. We're not going to the events for the speakers. We're not going to the actual conference. We're going to the hotel where the conference is at. Hey, there so, you go. So that's the uh, new ones. Well, we'll, we'll be by. Yeah. We're going to hang out. We'll probably come by the field and stuff like that when they do that, some outside stuff and, and hang out with everybody kind of thing. Yeah. Just I mean, we've been to the conference. We were there for the last couple of years. years yeah. And so we've been to the speaking events and we know what it's like. So again, if you want to go and, and see that, you know, it's cool and it's fun to network there, but. Yeah. Yeah, we'll just be come coming to hang out Saturday night. Yeah. All right. Well, take care, everybody. I'm excited to update you on what we're doing with Break the Great Reset. That's gonna be super cool. And then uh yeah, yeah. and hope to see you at uh Lou our event with Lou Perez in September. That'll be really fun. Let's it go shooting, be. get some laughs, and it'll be fun. Yeah. <laughs>